there are some courses that are not meant for your first semester because if you take them in your first semester, <laughs> ha -la -la. So, a lot of people don't want to do the research. They keep asking you about the schools that you want to apply to. Tell me. And they keep asking you personal questions. Please avoid asking personal questions. Like, are you it's... single? Are you dating? Exactly. <laughs> Life is never straight. So sure. just realize that if you have a low income state, then there are less opportunities to earn money and work even in school. And which is which is the, which is again a requirement you have to work in school you don't want to get deported because you're working outside of school so if that's the case you, you're taking a dining job then you know that you're going to get paid the minimum requirement it should be nine dollars or seven dollars sometimes you read things on the internet but it's just not enough you want someone that has that experience. that experience you know so that you guys can vibe together is, what are his requirements to get an a in this class is it possible is it feasible and then also there's some courses that you hey guys welcome back to the channel if you're new here you are welcome my name is aladi Ako, and i make educational videos sometimes i make videos about cultural differences and if you haven't subscribed to my channel please consider subscribing right now it is free and very fast to do please click the, click the subscribe button so guys um as you all can see we have a special guest Uncle Kayode is back. <laughs> Mr. Kayode is back. So I know some of you have seen him. And if you don't know him, we've made a video together on this channel before. So I'm going to put the link right here. So after watching this video and you want to know more, you can go watch it. So now, can you please introduce yourself? Okay. And thank you for gracing this show today with your face. It's a pleasure. Uh, my name is Kayode Bello. I'm a grad student at the School of Mines, um, Chemical Engineering, yeah, and I've been in the U.S. for about two years now. Okay, you are welcome and um, we are happy to have you here. Thank you. I will let our guest start. Okay, thank you very much, Aladi. So, um, I think moving to the U.S. to school, it's, it's very varied. It's a varied experience for people. We have different experiences across the board. And we'd just like to talk about some of the things that you can actually do that could be to your advantage to help you with your schooling because everyone needs every inch they can get in terms of an advantage while coming to school. And I think the first thing that I, I would like to point out is the fact that when you're schooling in the, in the US or when you're applying to school in the US, you can actually have a lot of waivers your way, which a lot of people don't know. And I didn't know myself. So there are people, and when I mean waivers, I'm referring to the um, exams like the IELTS, the TOEFL, and even GRE. There are cases where, based on a personal request, you can ask the school at the admission office and see if they can waive that for you on your behalf. That way you're saving a lot of money and you're saving yourself the stress of actually studying to pass those exams because then if you don't pass exams, it's, it's almost like you've spent some money just getting you know, an experience when you should be passing at once. So there are schools where they can waive that for you up front. You can reach out to the school, you know, go to their website, copy the um, admission office, their email address, you know, send them an email telling them probably you have financial issues and you can't really afford the application. Draft us something convincing and, you know, shoot your shot and they might waive the application for you and also uh, when I was applying to the School of Mines I reached out to them that I am a Nigerian and um, not just School of Mines a lot of schools that I was applying to at that point I reached out to them that I'm a Nigerian you know I studied in English and all that can you guys waive the TOEFL for me to be honest I think if not 100% of them said yes it is waived off and um, you can apply without TOEFL but I personally decided to write the TOEFL exam because I schooled in a French country and I didn't want any issues at all so you can take advantage of that just like how you're doing that's true. Yeah, that's true okay so um, I think the next thing would be when you're applying to schools you there is always this need for um, what people call camaraderie and that means a sense of belonging or community around people and so I think one of the most important things you have to look out for when you're applying to schools in the US or wherever you're going to is if there are people from your country or community who are currently schooling or residing there and the reason why you're doing that is for you to be able to reach out to them and get a feel of how that environment is before you even apply because you're going to spend a lot of money applying or doing all those things or plan to relocate so it's always better it's it's a bit more difficult to find people who are residing there but obviously there's 
um, the world is a global village, like, like they say now, with the use of social media, you can always search exactly. for people around exactly. on Facebook or the other social media um, platforms, and you can always find people from your community or from your locality who reside in that country. And with a polite message, you can always reach out to them. And I'm sure, sure. people are always, even though people might be um, maybe a bit paranoid, but I think on the overall, most people would respond to a polite message. Yeah. You can always reach out to them and ask them about that. And also, if you if you feel that like you want to reach out to students in the community or in the school community, you can always reach out to the admissions office or whoever you are corresponding with in the school. And you can always ask the permission to reach out to those people on your behalf if they will be willing to get back to you. And then you can create a, a communication channel from there where you can always correspond and ask them questions before you move in. And furthermore, to add to that point, um, when you finally do move in, maybe you've got an admission and you've come to school and you're about to start a school year, that's when they come in, those resources come in more um, and, and more useful um, because then you can always have a position where maybe you're speaking with your part advisor or your supervisor or whoever it is you're working with who is a lecturer in the school and they're giving you advice on the courses to take and how to plan your um, your grad program or your undergrad program or whatever you're doing you can always reach out to people who and I have, and I'm talking about this from personal experiences because I had um, senior colleagues from my previous university back in my country who were also in the same department with me in um, the school of mines and most of the time when I speak with my part advisor and I ask him about classes I'm taking and the plan for the next one and a half years or two years depending on how long your program may take you can always reach out to uh, those like fact check with senior colleagues and this could be people from your department who are from your country or from other countries just ask them senior colleagues and ask them oh what would be your advice about this do you think this course is very more difficult do you think the the supervise the, the lecturer is more lenient what is what are his requirements to get an a in this class is it possible is it feasible and then also there are some courses that you would take and they are just like they happen once in a year or once in two years and if you don't take them and maybe they're very they're very important for you when you're trying to like graduate maybe the, the core course yeah. then you need to know those courses and plan how to take them so that if you wouldn't amper or deter your um, graduation date because if you don't fulfill those requirements or those courses then you're not going to leave the school yeah so, exactly yeah yeah and they are like just what he was saying there are some courses that are not meant for your first semester because if you take them in your first semester <laughs> ha -la -la, <laughs> you will have yourself to blame so make sure you ask your seniors that make, don't just hear from one person and conclude try to you know compare talk to professors talk to students like you and you know try to get their sincere opinion to avoid stories that touch oh, and for the part where he talked about reaching out to people on social media i am one of those people that it worked for i made friends like all over the world where i was applying to i made sure i i searched for students like international students and also students that are from nigeria so and um, you know i reached out to them on facebook i went to facebook and i searched students at so 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 school and then I found people XYZ and um, you know I sent them friend requests which most of them accepted and you know I reached out to them asking them my question you know you have a lot of questions and you you're looking for you know sometimes you read things on the internet but it's just not enough you want someone that has that experience. that experience you know so that you guys can vibe together so yeah, it true. really worked for me and um, if you've seen Chimaya on this channel my Indian friend I'll link one of our videos together here he was one of those people I you know I became friends with even without you know being in the USA we were chatting all the way from Nigeria and here and at the end of the day yeah so yeah so also for them, just to add to that um there have been cases where a lot of people don't have enough information like so when you come into a new school they give you um, brochures and a lot of information and it could be it could be too much information for you to like to digest and just understand but it, that's and that's where having a resource person or a senior colleague or a friend or someone from your country or yeah. from your locality who, who you can relate to it helps yeah. because they probably have personal experiences or they've heard about other people's experiences and then you can draw from that and you can always um, 
try and leverage on that to make sure that you don't fall uh, foul of the rules or regulations because I had a personal experience. I was in school and I think it was, it was last semester and I I didn't sign up for a payment plan and this, that was it was for a few hours I was disturbed but I got it sorted out and that was the thing about um, schooling here in, in the US personally I think there's always they always understand that students will be students and you can always make mistakes with this and they always leave some Flexible. room or, yeah some flexibility there just for you to be able to like walk around problems that you might face and that's why it's always good to ask questions it's only when you don't ask questions that uh, a situation becomes untenable like if it's unsolved you can't salvage it anymore but if you keep asking questions there would always be something that you can do to yeah. work around that problem and then moving forward with the points uh, I think when you move in here yeah, a lot of people have talked about this I'm really sure there is this thing we call cultural shock and just finding your feet in a new environment is very difficult so I think that's that's where you need someone who's already living there or living around there who can tell you where to shop for groceries the things you need to buy the things you need to prioritize on yeah because the first few months are gonna be very very challenging exactly. and you need some form of guidance while you're finding your feet because at some point you're gonna get very conversant with what is happening and then you will know what to do but before then the settling period you need some help because yeah. that, like they always say no man is an island yeah. right so you that's that community and again um, this is this is going towards people who are having focus on or trying to focus on either the professional aspects or the academic aspects where you're trying to be a scholar so when you apply to schools like when I applied I was I was taken in as a non thesis and I was like why I was questioning that but I was questioning that from a very ignorant point of view because I didn't have enough information to go with so when you're applying to a school you can always try and I can I can actually idea about this like you can always check if you have if you have an option for a non thesis or a thesis yeah. or undecided yeah. depending on what you're doing because until you have a personal feel because some people might actually fall out of love with what they're doing become disenfranchised or disillusioned yeah, with this yeah. program and then then you can always have an option to move forward or to stop hopefully not stop or switch or switch <laughs> so it's always good to keep your options open so when very they give you, open <laughs> so when they give you an option of non thesis you can over time depending on how much you love what you're doing you can always change that option get a supervisor who's going to be um, who's going to take you up and maybe get you um, enrolled in some form of um, assistantship and then you can always kick on from there so it's most of the time when they give you an option don't just say no i don't want this try and be open-minded about yeah. it and then when you find yourself in the school or the department then you can always ask questions and see how you can change things based on real-time events what's happening to you at that point in yeah. time so if you're having a coded relationship with your, with, your, with your lecturer that you took the classes and you feel like you want to do research with them you can always speak with them and if things change and that's why i like um, the western culture if your circumstances change and you you don't feel so comfortable anymore you feel disenfranchised you can always make a simple request based on personal issues or whatever yeah. you can always make a change so yeah interest mm -hmm. yeah so what he said my own personal experience when i was coming at a point i was like i want to do research i don't want to do research i was battling the whole thing but luckily for me when i was filling out the application at my school um the online application it had this option of thesis non-thesis and then the third option for people like me undecided you know the rest is history i chose the undecided so yeah you, even if they just like you said they gave him um the non-thesis option i think you should accept it when you come i mean it's, it's easier to switch when you're here because you will you will see these professors one-on-one -on -one and you can look out their work and then you know check out which one you like and if you want to do a research and then you can collab with them and yeah. it's just for you to ask highest that will say no or worst case they are just going to say no yeah. right yeah. but you just have to ask that's it and so for those of you who might be wondering what's the non-thesis option or what the thesis <laughs> option because that was the first question that came to my mind that just means that you won't be required by the school to um, take on some research towards the completion or fulfillment of your um, master's degree requirement program or whatever you're doing so that's just it so the, the difference is you're doing research and you're not doing research and this is the thing even even though you're a non a non student you can always still get some research work done 
you, you, the only difference is you're not, you're not required to write a report. Defend the thesis. Defend and it. Stuff so like that. it's it's still it's still a win for you, depending on what you're looking for. Yeah, especially in, maybe in future you want to um, do a PhD. Mm -hmm. That will help. Some experience in the bag. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So I think those are some of the things that you might need to look out for when you are applying. And, and then, yeah, and yeah. then when when you finally get here and you start working because I think we're making this video based on um, some of your previous videos where you talked about settling in because it's it would be it, it's it's would be very difficult if you come in and you don't have the right information or the right people around like you to help you you're a loner you're working alone it you can be very difficult mistakes. here yeah you you would you it's not that you might you would definitely make a lot of mistakes or you might be working too hard in yeah. terms of working just trying yeah. to you're not very sure but when you when you know what you're supposed to do what's required of you then you can always concentrate your efforts on a particular field and then you can get more things done but if you're just trying to focus on several things at the same time trying before knowing that is not good enough just yes so wasting time essentially what you what we're saying is you have to get your priorities right and the only way you can easily do that is to have someone giving you good and valid information about what don't you need be lazy. to do uh, people are lazy when it comes to making research like they don't want to like put in the work to that's get this true. information that's you want to sit in your house and uh, wait for information to come and meet you that's true that's you have true to make some effort put in the work a number of us in the u.s and i'm, I'm speaking for most i think most students most students in the u.s actually didn't use a third party to get um admitted into the universities they especially actually, at graduate level yes they actually did the research themselves because it's a very simple process and i was really surprised by how simple it was i was i was astonished i was like really is this, is this that, that simple why don't a lot of people take a hold of this opportunity but i realized the reason is because a lot of people don't believe it's that easy and even when it's that easy they still don't want to put in the yeah. the, the effort required yeah. to get it done and then you start paying extra money to people to help you do something you can easily do yourself yeah. and the information is always available and i think it's probably because of different cultures things are run in different countries differently so you may, you may make those assumptions about the US or other countries Western countries, which is not necessarily true and that that might be the explanation for some of those reasons but the major reason why I'm making the video which we just talked about is the fact that we don't want you struggling to you of course a lot of people struggle to the first year or first semester and yeah. they, they never recover so I'm sure you've seen my academic probation I video. Did see it. I did see it. and that was the inspiration for this video. So it's always important for you to, to just have the basics right because then you can build on from there. You yeah. don't want to have a backlog. I, I had a friend who who had the probation the first semester and he ended up finishing with the 3.8 or something. But you don't want to be that kind of a person who has to like struggle for the rest of it. Just make sure you have a perfect um, GPA for the rest of your stay in school. It's very difficult. To, it, it's achievable, but it's very difficult. And, and I have to take extra classes. Again, that you don't yes. even really need to make up for for, for, for one boost, bad semester. Boosting. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> boosting boosting <So> time. <laughs> it's, it's always better you just do the bare minimum because it, again, you're paying a lot of money for each credit you're taking. Then you you don't even have to spend more money with taking those classes. You don't stress, want to do that. It's, it's like worrying about exams. It's stressful. <laughs> It affects the um, your mentality, especially if you don't have a, if you have a very fragile mentality about some of these things. Especially if you're not used to failing, because if you're not used to failing, hmm. then it's, it could be very very disheartening. But if you're used to, maybe you've had Mental a lot. Of, health. Yeah, maybe you've had a lot of experience where you've not done so well in some class and you've bounced back. Then fine, you've built up a mentality over over time. But if you've not built a strong mentality over time about classes and things like that, then it could really really derail your plans and you. So. So it's important to just have the right information and always ask questions. That would I would always say. Ask questions and make friends. That's very important. Connection. Make friends and have and ask questions. That would help you a lot when you're in school. And um, when you're trying to make these friends, I don't know if I've been guilty of this at some point, but don't just go to somebody's inbox and be saying hi, just send only hi or hello. <laughs> People are too busy here and you might never get a reply. That's true. So if you just be straight to the point, like, hi, my name is this, and um, I am planning to, you know, start school at this place. I'm just give it. I'm not saying write 
and a and piece too. Because that can turn people off yeah. when they look at the message. Personally, if I open your message and I see it so long, it's not at that point I'll be like, I'll come back to this later. And at the process of coming back to it later, I forget. Never get it. back to it. I think I, I would I would say just to add what, to what you're saying, I would say you have to be very concise with what you're saying. Avoid grammatical errors Habit. because yeah, just go straight you? to the point. Be concise. After being concise, you also need to make sure that you avoid grammatical errors because yeah, it's that, when a person is reading your message, they don't see your face, unless maybe it's on Facebook, they can see a picture, but they're trying to see, you're portraying yourself to them with the first messages, first impressions. So you don't want to start writing and it's filled with grammatical errors and all those sort of things. It just puts someone off. Yeah. So you want to be concise, go straight to the point, avoid grammatical errors. And ask your questions. If your question is okay, this is the reason why I'm reaching out to you. I would appreciate and be very courteous. I would appreciate and polite. I would appreciate a response regarding this. Don't sound entitled, please. Exactly. Don't don't, sound entitled. don't ever do that. No one owes you anything. Exactly. So be polite and just say, Oh, this is the reason I'm reaching out to you and I would appreciate if I got a response about this. Thank you very much. Look look forward to hearing from you. And that's very simple. Also, don't go and ask people questions like, can you give me the list of schools in US to apply? Because I've gotten that. I'm like, really? Like, I should give you a list of schools in US? That, Those are the basic that things That goes do. back to what we said about research. You need to make research yourself. <sighs> find out like, the schools. And I think this it's always good to just find out schools that just check about from people from the country and see the common schools they're going to. In those schools, if those schools have courses or programs that you are trying to apply to, it's it's because a lot of people have. I, I think I've stopped a lot of people. When you inform them about the process to apply, they just get. Um, they just lose the motivation. Yeah, they just feel like ah, this is too much work. Don't be like, don't be that person. That's one. Two. A lot of people don't want to do the research. They keep asking you about the schools you want to apply you to, tell me. and they keep asking you personal questions. Please avoid asking personal questions. Like, are you it's single? Are you dating? Exactly. <laughs> what has their relationship status got to do? Unless with? you feel the, the information you required is really central and very important to your admission uh, process or application, then please don't refrain from asking those questions. It just puts people off. I've, I've had those kind of cases where people ask personal questions. There was a friend of mine, he uh, was a classmate, and he reached out to me and he was like, oh, he was, he was planning to write a GRE exam and he was asking me what my score was. I, <laughs> what I, you okay. need his score for? <laughs> the first thing that came to my mind was, why are you trying to ask me what I scored? Yeah. This is a generalized exam. You, you cannot all get the same um, scores and you cannot assume that because this person did well. Yeah, you can do well or you can do better because you think you are smarter than that person. Exactly, you'll be surprised. This is, these things are circumstantial. So you can be smarter than someone else and you, you still score less than them in a generalized um, generalized test because I can relate to most that. people people perform differently when taking generalized exams like the TOEFL and GRE. So never ask those kind of questions. You can just ask them like, oh, what is the required score for this school? And then these information are always available on the internet. So Essentially, what we're saying is, those kind of questions are not required. You don't yeah. need to ask those kind of questions. So avoid personal questions. And then maybe questions like accommodations, like if you're worried, how yes. you know you can. That one is something I feel yes. like um, the That's internet the, is not really. What's the average price? Uh -huh. I, I think I asked those questions. Yeah. Like what's the average cost of living uh -huh. prices? Uh -huh. And that again, that goes down to the state you're living in. If you're living in a state like so, the states. Um, so in the city of New Orleans, you have. That's like they have the minimum. I think it's seven dollars an hour, pay minimum pay. Here in um, South Dakota is like nine dollars an hour. Over there in Colorado is like twenty-three dollars an hour. So again, it's cost of living differs from state to state, and yeah. you can always um, find that out or draw an inference based on the uh, the average earning power of each state. So if it's a very low income state, then you're very very sure it's cost of living is going to be very low. And that can be a good or bad thing, depending on your perspective. But life is never straight. So you just realize that if you have a low income state, then there are less opportunities to earn money and work even in school. And which is which is a, which is again a requirement. You have to work in school. You don't want to get deported because you're working outside of school. So if that's the case, you you're taking a dining job, then you know that you're gonna get paid the minimum requirement. It should be nine 
dollars or seven dollars an hour or twenty dollars an hour if you living in uh, maybe somewhere like Colorado. So it's so it it, div it, it, it differs from state to state. Yeah. And it's, 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 so you can always ask kind of questions: the cost of living, housing, how much does it cost? Yeah, to how to get groceries and all those things. And even it's not like I think Montana, you, you they don't pay taxes. So when you go to grocery shopping, you don't Ooh. pay taxes. So <laughs> exactly. Ooh. So because. A lot of people assume that so when you're buying groceries in at Walmart or wherever, general stores or Dollar Tree or whatever, you're buying groceries and you don't think about the cost of the taxes. Tax, I know, right? That tax is something. I remember buying yeah. shopping on uh, Black Friday and I bought something and then I found out later it was it was more than three hundred dollars. That means you you're looking at six point five percent added to that. So you always have to put those things into consideration when you're picking a place too. So yeah. yeah. And um, I also, before I forget, I should let you guys know if you finish watching this video and probably you still have um, doubt about um, the application process and all that, how to find a school by yourself. I have a video on my channel that I made last year about, you know, how to find this school yourself and how not to use an agent and stuff like that. That's good. Yeah. So I think that's all I have to say. Um, Uncle Kayode, Mr. Kayode, Engineer Kayode. You know we are Nigerians, so we value titles. We don't titles, say that so. there in the Western countries. But yeah, <laughs> this aspect now we are Nigerians. All right. So thank you, Sir Eshegon. Thank you for coming to you know. It's a pleasure. This is our show. Thank you so much for you know. I don't know how to thank you, but I'm really grateful, guys. If you if you know the kind of work that went into <laughs> filming this video today. You will thank you. So, it's a pleasure. I think we've come to the end of this video. Yeah. So guys, um, thank you so much for watching and don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and see you in my next video. Right. Bye. Bye.